Good morning, Quinn family. This is Raven Hullum bringing you the morning announcements. Today is Communion Sunday. Please have your elements ready for our Holy Communion later in the worship experience. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to everyone celebrating this week. May your new year be the beginning of a new season and a new favor in life. All right, everyone, get your calendars out. We made it. Yes, we did. Our Daniel fast ends today, which happens to be the eighth day of the fast. The number eight is the number of new beginnings. So how did you do? What revelations did God give you? Did your prayer life increase? Did you feel more powerful this week than last week? Stay after service with us for Quinn Cafe and let's share and encourage one another. QC Level Up. We'll have virtual youth workshops on Wednesday, November 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. and Saturday, November 13th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The first 10 youth to sign up and attend either workshop will receive $100 in a gift card. That's right, $100. I'll be signing up as soon as I finish these announcements. But you can visit our Facebook page and follow the instructions on the post or email us at qclevelup at gmail.com. From the desk of Brother James Collins, the Men's Fellowship is sponsoring classes on the use of cell phones and iPads. Classes will start Saturday, November 13th, promptly at 11 a.m. in the church building. If you are interested in joining and being taught by the best in the business, Brother Albert Berry, call Brother Berry at 313-598-4422 or Brother Oscar Barnett at 810-210-7188. And now, a special word from our pastor, Reverend Lynn Jackson. Take it away. Hello, Quinn family and friends. I am so excited that I just had to take a minute out just to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have been doing. We at Quinn have truly been blessed, and it's because you have allowed God to work in and through you. We have been so blessed to get our boiler installed. And you know, we've been waiting for that boiler for years. And I can tell you now that the boiler is in. It's been installed. We have heat and we have hot water. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. But thank you. Thank you for allowing God to use you in whatever way he did. However, he asked you to bless us and you came through, I say thank you. Some gave donations, $5,000, $1,000, $110. It all added up so that we were able to make the first down payment on the boiler. And some of you have uh, given of your time and your efforts, getting estimates and waiting with the contractors. And so I say thank you for whatever it is, whatever part you have played, I thank you. You know, Quinn has had so many wins in this past year or so. We've been truly blessed. We had the Meet Up and Eat Up program, which was a major blessing for Quinn, and just so many other things. I just wanted to take the time out and say thank you for allowing God to use you in such a mighty way when the people of God come together for God. There's no stopping what we can do. So let's continue to get those Quinn wins, amen? Let's continue to give as God puts it in your heart. Continue to do the work as God leads you to do. And we will continue to be victorious. We will continue to see those Quinn wins. Now God bless you, God keep you, and again, thank you. To everyone on Facebook, YouTube, and in Zoom, thank you for joining us this morning. Stay connected with Quinn Chapel and let's see what God will do through us. Remember, we are better together. Good morning. My name is Peggy Tipton and I will be delivering the prayer of invocation this morning. Hear our prayer, dear Lord. Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon us. We worship you and give you all the honor, glory, and we praise your holy name. 
As we gather here in the harbor of your safety, we thank you for fellowship and family. We ask that you will strengthen us, restore us, and inspire us with your love. Lord, would you fill us with your peace so that as we journey onward, we will pour out your love and grace to others. We ask that our souls would catch the wind of your spirit so that we would take your promises to all the earth. Amen. Let me 
the Lord saints so good to be with you today on this glorious day that the Lord has made this is our first Sunday celebration I cannot believe it is November already the months just seem to be flying by but this is our communion Sunday and so we come to celebrate and honor Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior for all that he has done for us the sacrifice that he has made for us on Calvary you know he took all 
of our sins and bore them on the cross. Aren't you glad to know that Jesus took all of our sins and washed them away? Hallelujah. Oh, that is something to celebrate. We thank God for Jesus today. And we thank God because he has given us a word for today. And you know, we're going to be talking about Lot and his life. And we're going to go into Genesis, the 19th chapter. But, you know, uh, just as a reminder, Lot was Abraham's nephew. And both of them did very well for themselves. They lived together. They had uh, done very well. They had flocks and herds and tents, so much so that they needed to split up because the herdsmen and the workers were disputing they were fighting over the territory amen and so they needed to split up and abram which is what he was called then abram decided to give lot the whole pick of the land whatever lot wanted he could pick the best of the land and so lot he decided to settle near sodom because it was the best land even though it was known as a city of sin but you know lot he decided to do what was best for himself putting aside his uncle's best interest, putting aside his uncle's needs, he did what was good for himself, not caring necessarily what was fair and equitable, not uh, really caring uh, much about anyone else but himself. And so in other words, a lot, he got a little greedy. You know, this kind of choice, being greedy, uh, as Lot's life shows, it can lead to some problems. When we get greedy, it can lead to some problems. When we stop choosing God's best for our lives, we may not realize that we are headed in the worst possible direction. So if you'll turn with me now to our text, we'll see that uh, two angels came to visit Lot to save him. Sometimes, you know, although we mean well, uh, we fall prey to temptation and to the will of others. Uh, sometimes we get caught up and take our eyes off of what God has for us. Sometimes we need God to rescue us from our own misdoings. Oh, I know that's right. So if you'll turn with me, we're going to go to Genesis, the 19th chapter verses 12 through 26 and I'll read for your hearing today from the message Bible again that's Genesis 19 verses 12 through 26 and it reads this way the two men the, the angels said to Lot do you have any other family here sons daughters anybody in the city Get them out of here and now. We're going to destroy this place. The outcries of victims here to God are deafening. We've been sent to blast this place into oblivion. Lot went out and warned the fiancés of his daughters. Evacuate this place. God is about to destroy this city but his daughters, would-be husbands, treated it as a joke. At break of day, the angels pushed Lot to get going. Hurry, get your wife and two daughters out of here before it's too late and you're caught in the punishment of the city. Lot was dragging his feet. The men grabbed Lot's arm and the arms of his wife and daughters. God was so merciful to them and dragged them to safety outside the city. When they had them outside, Lot was told, Now run for your life. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere on the plain. Run for the hills or you'll be swept away. But Lot protested, No, masters, 
You can't mean it. I know that you've taken a liking to me and have done me an immense favor in saving my life, but I can't run for the mountains. Who knows what terrible thing might happen to me in the mountains and leave me for dead. Look over there. That town is close enough to get to. It's a small town, hardly anything to it. Let me escape there and save my life. It's a mere wide place in the road. He said to him, All right, if you insist, I'll let you have your way, and I won't stamp out the town you spotted. But hurry up, run for it. I can't do anything until you get there. That's why the town was called Zoer, that is, small town. Now God destroys Sodom. Verse 23, the sun was high in the sky when Lot arrived at Zoer, and then God rained brimstone and fire down on Sodom and Gomorrah, a river of lava from God out of the sky and destroyed these cities and the entire plain and everyone who lived in the cities and everything that grew from the ground. But Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Ooh, the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father, we thank you, O God, for this day. We thank you for your word, O Lord. Now decrease me, O God, as you increase. Allow your voice to be heard, O God. We thank you, Lord, for just having your way today. We lift this prayer in Jesus' name and say amen. Amen. And I'd like to preach today from the title, Will You Look Back? Will You Look Back? You know, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, as many of us know, it was just a two cities straight up evil cities. Sin was running rampant sexually immoral, amongst other things. And if you read the beginning of this chapter, you'll see there was some nasty stuff going on in those cities. People were more interested in their own pleasures than serving God. Yes, they were. They had forgotten all that God had done for them. Cries of the people flooded God's ears. It was deafening unto the Lord, and God had had enough. Can you say God had reached his limit? Because he did. He had reached his limit. God decided to destroy the place. He said, enough is enough. I'm wondering, how many of you are concerned today. How many of you look around today and see sin running rampant? Sexual immorality is still happening. People are lusting over material things. They're out for themselves. And certainly self-gratification is the order of the day. Unfortunately, what is God thinking about us now? Is he saying enough is enough? You know, God sent two angels to visit Lot and to save him and his family from destruction. And Lot had a decision to make. And he didn't have much time to make it. His life depended on his decision, not only his life, but that of his family, too. 
the angels told Lot, get them out of here. And now we're going to destroy this place. God had had enough and was going to wipe out the place. He was just going to wipe it out. And you know, I think it is important today to see what Lot did to see the outcome of Lot's decision, to see what happened to his family. Why? Because, you know, tomorrow, it's not promised. And we too, we live in a messed up world. We too need to be ready to make a decision when God dispatches his angels. We need to be ready. We too need to heed the voice of God or face destruction or face his wrath. Mm. I know we don't like to think about that. But make no mistake. God is a loving God. He's a caring God. He's a forgiving God. But if you read in Galatians 6 and verse 7, the Bible tells us clearly, do not be deceived. Ooh, do not be deceived, my beloved. It says God cannot be mocked. He will not be mocked. A man or woman reaps what he or she sows. Ooh, my, my, my. So what decision will you make? What decision will you make? So many would probably make the same mistakes that Lot and his family made. And we don't want to be in that position. Amen? The first thing, let's look at it. The first thing is Lot tried to save his son-in-laws, but they did what? They treated it like a joke, like a joke. They didn't take Lot seriously. They dismissed what he had to say. How many of our family members would do the same thing? Hmm, it's a question to ask. Why? Are we, are we Sunday Christians? I mean, are we believable? They didn't believe Lot. Are we believable? Are we Sunday Christians? Are we uh, just someone who will praise the Lord on Sunday and then raise hell Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? Are we Sunday Christians? There, when we say we love the Lord, but uh, our actions just don't match up? Would we be able to save our own families? Wow. I learned in my studies that Lot had lived so long and was so contented among ungodly people that he was no longer a believable witness for the Lord. Oh, I don't want to be in that position. Lot had allowed his culture to shape him rather than him shaping his culture. And isn't that what we are called to do, beloved? To make a change? So are you a credible witness? I've got to ask you today, are you a credible witness for the Lord? Are you a credible witness for God? Or would people, would your own family think you were a joke of a Christian? Wow. Wow. Look at the second thing. I mean, Lot was dragging his feet the angels were telling him, go, when he's sitting there dragging his feet. God is trying to bless him, and Lot is just saying, hold up, wait a minute. Hold on here. God is trying to save his life, and Lot is saying, mm, uh, can you give me just a little bit of time, Lord? Woo. God has a sense of urgency. And Lot is saying, hmm, not now, God, not now. How many of us do the same thing and tell God, not now, not now, God? We'll drag our feet with God. 
We know, we know that God is speaking to us and you know God is speaking to you and telling you to do better. Know that God is trying to help you, showing you a better way. Know that God is leading you somewhere, showing you how to do better, to be better. But you keep saying, uh, not now, God. Not now, I'm, I'm kind of busy. Ooh, put that blessing on hold, God. That's basically what we're telling him. Put, put that blessing on hold. You know, that house you were going to bless me with, that job you were going to bless me with, the ministry, my, my calling that you were going to bless. Eh, go ahead and put that on hold. That's basically what we're doing. How many of you know that when you please God, he will bless you when praises go up? Blessings, what? Come down. Hallelujah. Please him, even when you don't feel like it, my beloved. Please him, even when it is not the popular thing to do. Please him just because it is right and good. Ooh, something to think about, isn't it? Are you getting all of the blessings that God has for you? As if all the other stuff, you know, weren't bad enough in Lot's life. <laughs> Lot even protested. Yes, he did. In verse 19, it says, you know, Lot says, I know that you have taken a liking to me and have done me an immense favor in saving my life. Uh, but I can't run for the mountains. Who knows what terrible thing might happen to me in the mountains and leave me for dead. Ooh. Oh, I just, I, I got to pause right there because so many times God is leading us. But we say, oh, no, that's not that. Mm, don't want to go there, God. God is trying to give him glory. And Lot said, no, that's okay, God. I just want mediocrity. He had a spirit of mediocrity instead of a spirit of glory. Ooh. He had a spirit of settling instead of a spirit of victory. He was willing to settle for less than what God had for him. Oh, my Lord, I hope you hear me today. He actually begged for less than what God said he could have. Ooh, how many of us do that same thing? How many of us? God wants us to move, but no, we stay put. God wants to promote us, but oh, we just say, uh, I think I can't do that. God wants to lead us, but we want to continually follow somebody. God wants to start something new, but we are just too comfortable with the old. God wants us to go, but we just say, no. Oh, my goodness. Lot said that he could not go where the Lord was leading him to go. God wanted him to go to the mountain, and Lot said, mm, uh, small town will do. I'll just go to small town, God. My beloved, I came by to tell you today, tomorrow is not promised. What would your decision be? If you were in Lot's position, what would your decision be today? You know, there's a hymn. Uh, it's called, There Is Time by Joseph Addison Alexander. And the first verse of it goes like this. It says, and no, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> uh, it says, there is a time we know not when, a point we know not where, that marks the destiny of men for glory or despair. There is a line by us unseen that crosses every path, the hidden boundary between God's patience and 
his wrath. Oh, hallelujah, saints. God is a patient God, but he is going to let us know when he, enough is enough. Hallelujah. And our delay is Satan's grand device for our ruin. Our delay, our holding back is only, uh, oh, hallelujah. It is only hurting us, my beloved. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, hallelujah, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, I want eternal life, don't you? Yes. You know, when God sends his angels, will you say yes? Ooh, when God says move, Will you say yes when God tells you it is time for change? Will you say yes? Truly say yes. Or will you be like Lot's wife? Will you look back? Will you look back? Will you try to hold on to yesterday? Will you try to hold on to what is gone? Will you try to hold on to the past? Will you try to hold on to your stuff, to your family, to your friends, even though God is saying something different? Will you look back or will you look forward to what God has for you? your blessings. Ooh, hallelujah, light. Lot's wife looked back. And you know what happened to her. She turned into a pillar of salt. Lot's family, they laughed and they were destroyed. Lot procrastinated and argued with God and he lost out on so many blessings. Imagine. Just imagine for a moment if they had done all that God had said to do. Imagine if they had gone where God had told them to go. How different life would have been for them. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us, it tells us, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of thy ways acknowledge him. I'll say it again. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. I don't know about you today, but I want to be on the path that God has for me, not the world. I want to be on the path God has for me because God has promised us streets of gold. Don't stay on the cobblestone road. God promised us mansions in the sky. Don't stay in a shack. God promised us victory. Hallelujah. Do not settle for defeat, my beloved. God promised us glory. Hallelujah. He promised us glory. He promised us victory. He promised us life and life everlasting. He promised us eternity in heaven with him. Ooh, glory to his name. That's what I want. And I pray that that is what you want too. Don't take it as a joke. Don't drag your feet. Don't argue with God. Hallelujah. Say yes. Say yes to his will and yes to his way. Say yes to his blessings through Christ Jesus. Say yes today to all that he has to bless you with. Say yes. Hallelujah. Do you want God's blessings? Then say yes to God. 
Do you want all that he has for you? Then say yes to God. Don't go with the world. Say yes to God. Let's run on for Jesus, my beloved. Let's move forward. Put all this other mess aside. Let's move on for Jesus Christ. Let's press on on toward the goal of the high calling. Let's press on to win that prize for which God has called us to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say yes to God. Don't look back. Go forward in Christ Jesus. And I know that you will be blessed. My beloved, we've learned today that Lot had compromised to the point that he was near useless to God. And when he did make a stand, nobody would listen question today is, have you become useless to God? Have you allowed your surroundings to dictate how you live your life? Or are you a soldier for the Lord? Are you actively living for Christ today? Have you shared Jesus with anyone lately? Have you shared the good news with anyone? You know, God created us with a plan and a purpose. Hallelujah. Will you be like Lot and go along with the status quo and compromise your walk with God? Or will you say yes to his will and yes to his way? God is a loving God and he knows your heart. Yes, he does. Just like with Lot, God will give you another chance. Hallelujah. I know, maybe you are a perfect Christian. And God bless you if you are. Hallelujah. But I'm talking to those that may have lost their way or maybe you never committed to God at all. Well, today is your day. Hallelujah. Today you can recommit your life or give your life to Christ. This can be the best day of your life. Hallelujah. All you need to do is repent of your sins and ask God to forgive you. Turn from your old ways. That's what repent means. Turn from your old ways, from your sinful behavior, and ask God to help you. Ask God to be the Lord of your life, and he will do just that. Ooh, that's good news. We serve a mighty God, a loving God, a caring God. So if you've made that decision today that you want to live for Christ, be a soldier for the Lord, hallelujah. If you've made a decision to give your life to Christ, recommit your life to Christ, we here at Quinn Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church, want to know. Because we want to come alongside of you. Maybe you're looking for a new church home. A church home where you can be uh, nurtured and cared for. Quinn is a wonderful family and we would welcome you if you would join with us. All you need to do if you gave that prayer of salvation, if you recommitted yourself or looking for a home, give the church a call, won't you? You can reach the church office at 810-238-5636. Leave us your information so we can get back with you, so that we can walk alongside you in this journey for Christ. Or if you're on social media, just go ahead and drop it in the chat and we'll see it there and contact you. Let us be of help to you as we journey together 
in this walk with Christ. That's the only path I want to be on, and I pray that is the same path you want to be on today. Now, I pray that God will bless you real good. and saw God moving in a fresh new way in worship today. You bounced to the beat, clapped your hands, shouted hallelujah, or watched in amazement what God was showing you. Something about the message caught your attention and maybe it got you to thinking about some things. All those incidents were God speaking to you. He's always communicating with us in so many ways. That's because he really loves us. Now let's take our praise to another level by worshiping God through giving. Let me explain. When we give our first and best offering to the Lord, we set in motion his plan of sowing and reaping. That's right, God has a plan. The scripture says, that which you sow, you shall reap. He created the system and he will honor his word. The best part about it, you can't be God given no matter how you try. The Lord just loves to give and he gives in so many awesome ways. Now, if this ministry has been a blessing to you today, consider partnering with us as we take the good news of Jesus Christ all around the virtual world. Place God first today as you seek him and what you should sow. Let me tell you the ways you can sow your seed. You can sow your seed through Cash App, Giveify, or Pushpay. You can also scan the QR code whenever you see it. Or you can mail in your seed to Quinn Chapel AME Church, 2101 Lippincott Boulevard, Flint, Michigan, 48503. God bless you. now prepare our hearts and our minds to receive our Holy Communion. We do not want to do this just out of tradition, but we must remember the sacrifice that was made by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sacrifice on Calvary's cross. For the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six through 29 for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ... You are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. So let's take a moment now to pause before the Lord and examine our hearts. Invite the Lord to forgive you in those areas that may be revealed to you. Let us pause. Now, having done that, let us pray together our prayer of general confession. And again, let us not do it out of habit or ritual, 
But let us humble ourselves before the Lord, confessing together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, having your elements before you, I will pray our prayer of consecration over your bread and juice in preparation for our most sacred sacrament unto our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these your creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. And now, if you will, please take your bread, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. And likewise, take now the cup which represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Amen. And now having renewed your covenant with your Lord and Savior, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us not look back, but press forward into all that God has created us to be, into all that God has purposed for us, into all of the blessings that he has in store for us. Amen. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always and forever.